Jeff Green. Jeff Green, thank you very much. Lovely to be in the beautiful city of Melbourne with your trams and your bipolar weather. Because <laughs> I love the anomalies, uh, anomalies of Australia. Because Australia's a dichotomy. Yeah, I don't know what that means, but it sounds impressive when you say it. <laughs> Australia's a dichotomy. What do you mean? I'm leaving now. <laughs> no, tell us what you mean. Because you're lovely, warm-hearted, kind people. Then you get into your cars, you become fire-breathing, psychopathic maniacs, don't you? <laughs> I'm terrified driving in Australia. My friend says in Germany, they drive as fast as they want on the autobahn. We should have that in Australia. I said, no, no, we shouldn't. <laughs> You see, the Germans drive very expensive cars with robotic precision. That's how it works. In Australia, you're descended from Anglos and Celts, with a few Asians and Mediterraneans thrown in. The consequences of which, the roads are a cauldron of chaos. You've got tradies on the inside doing 100 k's an hour, drug adult truckies on the outside, some nearly dead grey nomad in the middle at 30 k's, with his face set to... <sighs> Weaving through all this is a pea plater that's fitted a McLaren exhaust to his Toyota Starlet. <laughs> He's got five friends in the back mooning people and shouting homophobic slurs. <laughs> Behind him is a teenage princess in her dad's BMW X5 that wants to show that women can multitask by driving, texting, putting a lipstick on in the rearview mirror and crashing the car all at the same time. <laughs> On the inside is some toothless battler, 10 IQ points below fuckwit, <laughs> whose cars held together with gaffer tape and hope. <laughs> Imagine saying to that lot, go as fast as you want, everybody. <laughs> Good luck with that experiment. Because this idea that Australia's a nanny state, I mean, I was in Cairns doing a parachute jump. My mate said, Jeff, do you want to do a parachute jump for charity? I said, which charity? He said, spinal injuries. <laughs> What? Against my better judgments, I go there, they're giving me two parachutes, a main one and a reserve. Then they're putting a helmet on my head. They said, oh, mate, you've got to wear the helmet now. It's the law. I said, the helmet? That's not going to save you. <laughs> when have you met someone going, yes, both my chutes failed to open, but luckily, I was wearing a helmet. <laughs> yeah, I hit the ground at 180 kilometres an hour. <laughs> luckily, this bicycle helmet saved my life. <laughs> That's so you look good in the coffin, that's what that's for. <laughs> so they don't have to do any reconstruction on you. Your friends are at the funeral going, he looks good, doesn't he? <laughs> yes, but I don't remember him being four foot two. <laughs> very little. Because I grew up in the 70s, right? They had a different attitude to safety in the 70s. Non-existent, I think they called it. <laughs> the teacher at school would be saying, if you're going to be playing with liquid mercury, make sure you put an asbestos mat down, all right? <laughs> that stuff's very dangerous. <laughs> and next week, we're all going to go meet Rolf Harris, so that'll be nice, won't it? <laughs> Woo! Backstage with Rolf, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Thank you for listening to me. I'm Jeff Green. Good night. <laughs>